Yes, welcome into Sports Bit Betting Insight today, Monday, August 29th. Paulie and Teddy, big game breakdown, big series between the Marlins and the Mets. Also, the Mariners and the Rangers. We'll go inside the huddle, the deep dive, recap week three, the preseason, all the NFL news, and we try to make it four in a row with the play of the day, and we'll give out a football play as we look to stay perfect in football. Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. How about a bad beat to start? The Bengals were up 21-3 to last night. What happened, Teddy? Oh, well, Dalton dominated. A.J. McCarron looked really good. The Jags' first stringers got blown off the field. But the problem was, if you had Cincinnati, they looked too good. Everyone was off the field by halftime. And then it was Keith Wenning and Joe Licata time. And those, that duo <laughs> wasn't pretty if you watched the Bengals in the second half. They combined two of nine for 18 yards and a pick. Oh, and they had two sacks for minus 17 yards. So the net, you have 11 dropbacks, one net yard, and one turnover. That's not what you're hoping from your quarterbacks. Uh, Lakata's pick six was a straight up and ATS difference maker. Jags win 26 21. And you know about Joe Lakata, right? He was the best quarterback in University of Buffalo history, which speaks volumes about the University of Buffalo football program. Paul, books weren't rooting for that ending either. I'll tell you what, a lot of Jags money on game day, bet from one and a half up to two and a half. Books thought they were going to take all that money. Instead, they had to give it out plus more. Jags get the win. The Jags get the cover on a Cincy pick six. Bad beat for Cincinnati. Bad. Yep, bad for the books. We've been telling you on Sportsbit how great that Mike Zimmer's been in the preseason. Now 11-1 and one straight up. And the Vikings were bet up from four all the way to seven. And it would have been a blowout if your buddy Stave wouldn't have kept turning the ball over. Yeah, and the incredible thing about the Vikings run is that they've done it without what we look for for most of these preseason teams, which is a good backup quarterback, a good third stringer. All this playing time for Joel Stave, and yet they continue to win games and cover points. I'll tell you what, the books were lucky that there was some buyback uh, uh, because the Vikings, as you mentioned, got bet up all the way to minus seven for minus four. got bet back down to six and a half. And uh, had there not been that late money on San Diego, it would have been all Vikings money, and the books would have had an even worse day they already did. But, uh, I mean, the Vikes showed all week uh, in practice. We're talking about all week in practice how much they really wanted to play well in the opener of their new stadium. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be a nasty venue for opponents to play at all season long. Yes, you're right about that. Another one from yesterday. The books were sweating out the finish of the Cardinals and the Texans as Arizona was down seven with the ball. If that thing, that thing could not fall one. Oh, it would have been a disaster. Yes. It would have been an absolute disaster for the books if it, if it lands on one. But it didn't matter if it's Houston winning by one or Arizona winning by one because the line bounced between Houston minus one and Arizona minus one all day. And at the end of that game, no one's kicking the extra point to go into overtime. They're going to go for two, and somebody's going to win by one. There was a late flurry of Texas money. It closed a minus one and a half. But uh, Matt Barkley, with the opportunity, got a couple of first downs, but then he threw the pick. And Barkley, a big part of the reason why the Cardinals 0-3 straight up, 0-3 ATS in the preseason. Polly, we told you on the weekend preview edition, it's not about what the GM says. It's about what the players were saying. We gave you some great player quotes from Arizona on the weekend preview edition that hopefully we're able to make you guys some money. That's why you watch sports bit you're right about that and a, and a nice way to start the college football season friday night a ton of money with uh to, over money with hawaii and cal no sweat there but oh no middle job it lands 20 everyone wins oh yeah i mean good line shoppers what could have won with either side you know the game opened as high as minus 22 hawaii money drove it down to 19 and a half there were plenty of 19 and a half widely available on game day then the late money came in back on cal and drove it up to 21 and a half you know, remember, the game ended with Cal at the Hawaii one-yard line. Uh, so yes. it wasn't like it was a done deal the whole way through. But Hawaii did get the last score, and that was not what the books wanted. And, of course, there was all that over money. That total closed at 66.5. It was bet up from 63, opened as low as 61. And the total was pretty much decided by the end of the first quarter. If you had yeah. an under ticket, you weren't feeling real good when they scored 31 after one. Yep, yeah, more more bad for the books continues. Uh, the Giants bet up to 320, a blowout against the Braves at home. Yeah, I mean, the Giants haven't been playing well. Uh, we've talked about that a lot. In fact, they had the worst record in the National League since the All-Star break, but betters didn't care. They kept laying it all the way up to Madison Bumgarner's first pitch, and Mad Bum 
pitched well, but it was Joe Panic who made the bookmakers panic. Had two home runs and four RBIs. Another bad result for the house. And one more. You try to explain this. Uh, the Cardinals were two dollars Saturday and got beat. They lost again at home Sunday. A ton of A's money. Why can't the Cardinals figure it out at home this season? It's just baffling. And you say a ton of A's money. I mean, there really was a ton of A's money. That line, St. Louis was minus 185 in that range of the open. That closed at minus 150 uh, on Sunday. They lose at home again. And look at the split. Here's a team that's minus 22.5 units at home. And they're plus 17.5 units on the road. You give either one of those numbers, minus 22.5, they're bottom, I think, bottom two team in baseball, bottom three. Plus 17 and a half. I mean, the good for second best in all of MLB if it was their aggregate number. But it's a bizarre split for St. Louis. If you've been betting it, you've been making a lot of money betting the Cardinals this year because they've been losing at home and winning on the highway basically from day one. Yes, big game breakdown up next. We'll start with the Marlins and the Mets and NFL all in the deep dive. And let's make it four in a row. Coming up on Sportsbit, betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Tune into the MLB Odds Couple Show Sports Fit Viewers Monday, August 29th. Mike Brenner continues to chug along. I'm not lying. He's up 35 units in our show in August. Mike Brenner, you have any say to Sports Fit Viewers about your awesome performance in August? No, hell no. I'm just ready for football. And hey, guys, when you're all done over there with Teddy and Pauly, let us come into your living room and show you a good time. Back on Sports Fit, time for Big Game Breakdown. As always, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Marlins in New York to take on the Mets. Dollar seventy-seven the total. Marlins favorite Fernandez against Montero. It's a battle for that second wild card. The Marlins only have a they're only one game ahead of the Mets for the three spot behind the Cardinals and the Giants. And we've been telling you all season long on Sportsbit about the home and away issues with Fernandez, and we have to keep repeating it because it keeps happening. His career at home twenty-seven and two with a one-five-seven. On the road, career eight and fourteen with a three nine nine. This season at home, ten and two with a one nine one. On the road, three and five with a four four two ERA. Teddy, and it's been getting worse since July. Not better. Oh, it's getting much worse. I, I mean, the last three road starts, he's been ugly. Or sorry, the last four road starts, zero and three with a six point five five ERA, and that's a real problem for the Marlins. Because look, this offense without Giancarlo Stanton continues to slide. They scored 45 runs in the 14 games he got hurt, just over three runs per game. That's not going to cut it in September. That's not going to cut it in October. Miami's got to hit better if they want to give even Jose Fernandez a chance to win and to succeed in October. And, of course, Fernandez not pitching in his most friendly venue this evening. Well, so the Mets were thinking playoff push here, but you got Mats hurt. They're skipping DeGrom start. Harvey's out, so they got to go to double A with Montero. Who is this kid? Yeah, I mean, once upon a time, Terry Collins and Dan Worthen were thinking about playoffs and World Series. They got Harvey, Mats, DeGrom, Dominant Eaters. Now it's Seth Logo, Robert Selman, Rafael Montero. Look at the look on their faces. This is a great picture uh, to show Oh, what these guys are dealing with. Now, it would be DeGrom's slot tonight, but he's going to get skipped at least once through the rotation. Montero called up because they need him. Not because he's ready, because they need him. Look at him at AAA this season. Four and six with a 7.20 ERA. He's only averaging five innings per start. He got demoted to AA where he pitched well. Four and two with a 1.70 ERA, but... You look at the ERA, and then you look at the advanced metric numbers, and yeah, they got him at double-A right now. They have double-A advanced metric numbers. The 1.70 ERA for Montero, how about this? A 3.97 FIP, fielding and independent pitching. So uh, clearly he's been lucky as much as good. And Terry Collins is so old school, he probably doesn't even notice FIP. His quote, he's had two real, real good start. He's got an ERA sub uh, uh, 2.0. Even though it's double A, that's still a good league. In order to have that kind of ERA, you've got to be pitching well. Um, Okay, Collins, I guess you got to say something to to, uh, uh, try to make you feel good about trotting Montero out to the hill. But let's put it this way. Even with Jose Fernandez's splits, there's a reason that the Marlins are minus 170 on the road tonight. Yeah, God, whoever gets this other wild card is just going to be a shitty team. 
Cole's hurt with the Pirates. All the Mets issues are still not out of it. The Marlins won't go away. They're not playing good ball with Stanton out. I mean, nobody wants that second wild card. These are two lousy teams here. Well, the Giants have stunk since the All-Star sure. break. The Cardinals are a problematic team. The Dodgers sure. still can't hit lefties. I mean, the National League as a whole, look, it's the Cubs to lose. And anyone that gets there is probably going to be fodder for the Cubs on the way to the World Series. Yes, game number two, live on sportsbookreview.com. The Mariners take on the Rangers. Rangers $1.70, eight and a half the total. Iwakuma against Darvish. And the Mariners had a big opportunity. They struggled again, lost the last two games in Chicago. And uh, if Iwakuma doesn't step up, they can kiss that wild card spot goodbye. Yeah, but just like we were talking about a moment ago with the National League wild card and the American League wild card, all this stuff, and I failed to say it a moment ago, which is why I got to say it now. There's a long time between now and October. Don't underestimate. Yeah, okay, it's 30 days. There's you know a little over a month, but boy, there's a. I mean, so much can change. There's momentum in terms of injury, in terms of teams playing poorly versus playing well. You know, we've seen remarkable September turnarounds from teams playing poorly to playing well or playing well to playing poorly. So just to say, here we are at the end of August, Seattle needs to do this or uh, St. Louis needs to do that or the Mets are in trouble. You know, let's <laughs> we'll try to make money with it, but let's not write anybody off just yet or hand anybody any crowns. Now, we talk about Seattle, Iwakuma. This is the guy who I've made money with this year. I've made money with him. In recent years, he's having a real solid August. Three and two with a 2.20. You know, um, the question that we have to ask, though, is he running out of gas at this stage of the campaign at the age of 35? We always worry about the guys in the hot summer heat uh, who aren't quite as fresh as some of the young, bulkier kids. You know, I want a guy 6'4", 250. <laughs> Pitch for me in August more than uh, uh, Hisashi Iwakuma. His last three starts for Iwakuma, 21 hits versus only seven strikeouts. He also allowed a home run in each game. He did keep working out of trouble, and there aren't a whole lot of pitchers I like better at working out of trouble than Iwakuma, uh, but he's been in trouble pretty consistently in his last three starts, and that's definitely a 21 hit to seven strikeout ratio, not a good one. That being said, Polly, and I know I'm rambling on here, but the bottom line, he's got an ERA under, seven, or under three, in seven starts and a 4-2 and two record in Arlington since the start of the 2013 season. And current Rangers are hitting just 677 with their OPS against him. That's 276 career at-bats, a significant sample size, and a much better track record against this lineup in this ballpark than most opposing hurlers. But as I talked about last week, I like this Texas team. They just took, th big surprise, they just took three out of four at home against the Indians. And, and w w if Kuber, when Kluber wasn't pitching, everyone else stunk. So I like this Texas team. He got Hamels, and guess what? Here comes Darvish, turning it on at the right time. Only two and three when you look at his, his record and eight starts since he came back. Rangers only four and four, but a 2.92 ERA over 49 innings, 62 strikeouts, first 41 hits allowed. And the bullpen's coming around, believe it or not, with the Rangers. Number three in MLB in war in August. This is a dangerous team in October in the American League. Up next, the huddle. We'll talk recap week three of the NFL preseason, talk about Kaepernick, and we'll look to make it four in a row with the play of the day on SportsBit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Hey, guys, it's that time of year again, football season. And with that, here's a message from everyone's favorite prick. If you like Captain American football, there's 50,000 dead presidents on the line in this year's Beat the Prick contest. In case you ain't fucking guessed, I'm the prick. Click on the link below for more info. I'm ready to stomp some ass. This is going to be my best performance yet. So join the day. It's free, you fucking squares. Back on Sports Pit, time for the huddle, the deep dive. NFL week preseason uh, pre week number three, China Doll. Romo gets hurt again. He's out six to ten weeks. And how about this, Teddy? Garrett, even though it's reported he's out six to ten, Garrett still thinks there's hope if he can play week one against the Giants. He won't rule him out. Well, th this is the truth of it is we don't know. I don't think Garrett knows. And Garrett certainly doesn't want to give the Giants any fodder for who they're going to play. He'd love to keep them guessing as long as possible. What's the real timetable for Tony Romo's return? Well, this is what Jason Garrett is saying. Quote, he's just going to start getting into rehab, and part of his rehab is he's going to be wearing a back brace for now. So you'll see him around wearing that. 
Again, we'll take a situation day by day, like we do with every guy on our team and every injury that we have. He'll do the things he's capable of doing and won't do the things he's not capable of doing, and hopefully he'll progress every day. There is no reason for me to stand up here and put a timetable on this. A lot of other people outside this building have suggested they know what the timetable is. That's not the world we live in. So basically, Garrett's saying absolutely nothing about Tony Romo's health and when we can expect to see Tony Romo back in the lineup. He is hopeful, but look, it's Dak Prescott time. It's Dak, yeah. Is he ready? What do you think, Teddy? It's a whole different ball game from the preseason now to week one against the Giants. Well, I mean, Prescott has had a very, very good August. That being said, he did not see a whole lot of blitzing in August. And the one game where he did face a pretty good defense, well, in Seattle, 5.0 yards per pass attempt. Those aren't the type of numbers you expect to see from a quarterback of a playoff team. Yes, and Jerry Jones, those comments uh, earlier in the year that he thinks Romo can play another five years should be drug tested for those comments. <laughs> All right, looks like looks like Simeon will start the Thursday night opener week one at home against Carolina. Uh, Mark Sanchez will be cut if he doesn't. He might get cut anyways, but unless he agrees to a pay cut, he'll be out the door. And if they cut him, they get their pick back, which they sent to Philadelphia. So, hey, Sanchez didn't even play Saturday against the Rams. Yeah, Gary Kubiak, quote, I've got a lot invested and a lot of work that I can make some decisions off of now. I'll do that. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it Sunday or Monday. I don't know. I've got enough going on that I can make a decision. Now, if you're saying, can I make a decision? Let's see. Trevor Simeon wasn't all that special against the Rams. He opened with a pair of three and outs. You know, he finished up going 10 of 17 for 122 yards, one touchdown, one pick. But... When you see one of the two guys who was in competition for the starting job and he doesn't get off the bench for no reason in week three of the preseason, you can probably say, like so many other teams have said in recent years to Mark Sanchez, bye bye Yep, you're right about that. And maybe bye-bye to another quarterback. Kaepernick won't stand up for the anthem. We might not have to worry about it in a week because he might not be on a team as a 40. He was horrible again in that performance in the, in the, over the weekend. Now, look, neither you or I have anything to say about what it's like to be an African-American in America today, Paulie, because neither one of us are. And Colin Kaepernick is allowed to have his opinions. He is allowed to protest in, in a way that he feels is appropriate to protest. That being said, football is the bigger issue. And when you're playing badly and then you're creating off-field distractions, I mean, he was two of six for 14 yards. The offense didn't produce anything in his week three drives. He hasn't done anything this preseason. So when you're creating an off-field distraction and you're not producing on the field, you know what? I'm not so sure that Kaepernick is going to make the 49ers either. Yeah, uh, you're, yeah, we agree on that one. The Giants, the offense struggled again. And here's a quote from Ben McAdoo. We have some work to do. We're confident we'll be able to get it fixed. End quote. When are you going to get it fixed? You're not going to play Thursday in the final preseason game. The Cowboys are coming up. Well, let's put it this way. The starters in week three for the Giants. It's been three weeks now. And this week was every bit as bad. 29 plays for 61 total yards. They're not once did they advance into the Jets territory. Last week in Buffalo, Manning and the starters were in for four series. And they produced... 37 yards and one first down. Nothing resembling a scoring drive and no, as in zero points. So look, you know, there's work to do. Here's the center, Weston Richburg. Quote, we didn't do well enough. We didn't give the quarterback enough time to throw and we didn't open up enough holes. We have a lot of work to do. Okay, they're saying they have a lot of work to do. They're stressed out. But I'm not looking at the Giants and looking at this preseason saying and saying it's hopeless. It's not hopeless for the Giants. Some teams it might be hopeless for. This is a veteran quarterback who hasn't missed a game in 11 years in the third year of an offense that he's been running very effectively for the last or for the first two seasons. I expect the Giants to resolve at least some of these problems. Uh, and we look at the G-men right now. I, I, one thing I was wrong about, I thought if the Giants looked bad against the Jets – the, really, the market would just collapse on this team. There'd be money pouring in against the Giants in their season win total. There'd be money pouring in against the Giants in week one. But, oh, 
There's money pouring against every other team in that division, too. And the Giants, we haven't seen it. And I think part of it's because there's been so much anti-Dallas money. There's been anti-Philly money. There's been anti-Redskins money. Nobody in the betting markets likes any of these teams in the NFC East. And if you have a schedule that includes four teams from the NFC East on it, you're probably feeling a little bit better about your chances today than you were a month ago. Yep, that division is wide open now. And the Colts look, not only do the Colts look horrible again, more injuries. Oh, yeah, and injuries where they can't afford injuries. On the offensive line, the left guard, Jack Mawart, injured his ACL. This is a guy that started 30 games over the last two seasons for an offensive line that already has major depth concerns. This is no joke for Indy right now. Their offensive line is a freaking mess, and that's not good news for Andrew Luck coming off his own injury-riddled campaign. Yes. All right. Let's make it four in a row and stay perfect in uh, in football so far. Money time, play of the day. Where are we going, Teddy? Yeah, let's start right now with football. Let's talk about Thursday night, game number 135-136. And take a look at Louisville and Charlotte over the total. <laughs> 60 and a half, the current number. If you shop around, you can find a little bit better than that. Look. With Lamar Jackson at quarterback, Louisville can approach or exceed this total all by themselves. Because the Charlotte defense isn't going to get a whole lot of stops in this one. Petrino's never shy about running it up when he has the chance. Let's take a Louisville and Charlotte over 60 and a half. That is our play of the day. All right, very good. A ton of games to talk about Thursday. The college football season underway, plus we get to the final week of the preseason and some big series continue in Major League Baseball as we get into September. All that coming up. Big week coming here. Uh, look forward to on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com.